Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So guys, today's class is going to be really, really crucial for all the NABARD aspirants. If any one of you is watching me right now, because I have important topics that can be asked in your ARD and ESI current affairs in phase two. Okay, so stay with me till the end of this video because this is going to be very crucial for you. Now let's begin this video. But before that, let me inform the new students about the live courses for our uh, code for our exams like RVS, EBI, and NABARD. So this is the live schedule. So guys, if you are planning to enroll in any course, then do give it a try. And if you are uh, preparing self, then it is well and good. But in case you want to try your hand at any course, then do try to uh, explore these courses. And if you want the demo lectures, they are also provided to you. And if you find any kind of difficulty in uh, looking for the course or anything, then you can contact us on this number. You can also mail to us. So there are various ways through which you can connect with us if you have any kind of problem in preparing for the examination in uh, see if you are seeking the right kind of guidance for your career. So all of these are provided on this number. So you can call to us. Okay. Now let's begin with the first question. The first question is which country's embassy has launched a special project SARS in collaboration with Kushi Foundation to promote women empowerment, menstrual hygiene and awareness in Arthala Gazia. So here guys, Israel is the right answer. With Israel, we are also establishing the villages of excellence and the center of excellence. And the number of both these, you are going to tell me in the comment section below. Coming back to this news, Israel Embassy, which is in India, this embassy has collaborated with Khushi Foundation to launch a project which is named as SARS. Now, under this project, a center will be established, and in those cent in that center particularly, right now only one center is going to be established. So, in that center, the sanitary pads will be developed, and those sanitary pads will also be named as SARS. So, the project's name is also SARS, and the product's name is also SARS. The basic idea behind developing that project is the sanitary pad is to give employment to the women, to create awareness among the women uh, regarding the menstrual hygiene and using these safe products. Plus the pad which is going to be created in this center, that pad is also going to be chemical free. Okay, so that is also a benefit of this project. Now, the ambassador of Israel to India is Naor Gilon. Who is the ambassador of India to Israel? This is again your question. Do find it out and mention it in the comment section below. Even if you don't remember the ambassadors as of now, it is fine because this is not important and ambassadors are many in number. It may happen that when you have your examination, the ambassador changes. So don't remember the ambassador as of now. Next question is, well, uh, when will the international cooperation scheme of the Ministry of MSME get expired? So expiry date of a scheme has been asked from you. So from this question itself, try to understand the depth you need to cover in the government schemes in order to clear the examination, especially your ESI paper. There, they dig up the government schemes and create questions. Now coming back to this question, the answer is FI26. Okay. Uh, in 2021, the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises had increased the uh, tenure or you can say extended the tenure of the scheme uh, from FY22 to FY26. So this is the tenure. The basic purpose of this scheme is international cooperation scheme. So it basically tries to build the capacity of the MSMEs by providing them access to the international exhibitions because when they go to the exhibition, they get exposure of different products, different innovations. Thus, they get uh, the idea or you can say experience of new products and they can bring the innovation. Fairs, conferences, seminars, buyer seller meets abroad. So all of these are things are undertaken so that the MSMEs can develop the intellectual property. Okay. Innovations can be brought. So that's the basic idea. Now, this scheme has three components. First is market development assistance, and this assistance is given in physical and virtual. 
both modes online and offline both are available second is capacity building of first time exporters so this is also a, a component of the scheme and the third component is framework for international market intelligence dissemination recently this second component was in the news that is why i picked up this scheme and it is important for all of you to cover because it is related to msmes which is a part of your rural development okay exactly not the msmes are directly the part of your rural development but yes msmes play a major role in the development of the rural areas that's why msme is a very crucial topic from esi's perspective and this scheme is again important now coming to the third question recently union uh, tourism and culture minister ji kishan reddy has announced a special tourist train to cover the ambedkar circuit or panch teerth the circuit will be developed under the swadesh darshan scheme how many circuits were identified at the time of launch of the scheme in 2014 to 2015 again an in depth question from the scheme and if you have noticed this video belongs to the phase 1 current affairs and in phase 1 also the uh, examiners of rbi sabhi and abad are asking the questions in such depth okay so you have to prepare extensively for both the phases and at the same time together for both the phases okay now coming back to this news or question the right answer is 50 so as you have noticed the news itself in the question that is the government has announced to create the ambedkar circuit and this ambedkar circuit will be known as the panch teerth okay panch teerth is five places of pilgrimage panch teerth teerth is pilgrimage so uh the next statements uh, tell uh, you about the modalities like the date of journey ticket price passenger number of passenger etc etc not important just for your information uh that these modalities are still in progress so this circuit has not been completed yet the circuit will be developed under the swadesh darshan scheme i will talk about the scheme but first let me show you the places which will be covered so here guys four places are going to be covered actually five places are there i will tell you about that first is the janm bhumi which is mahau in maharashtra then the uh, then you have your shiksha bhumi the place in london okay then you have your uh, then you have your diksha bhumi where he embraced buddhism so i am connecting the journey of life with these places okay and then we have the mahaparinirvan bhumi where he died in delhi then we have the chaitya bhumi where he was cremated in mumbai okay so these are the five places now as of now the train structure the train journey is routed for four places which are in india and this london wala place i don't think that we are going to take the train to london that is not possible geography geographically okay so uh, in my opinion all these four places will be covered through the train and let's see what news will come up for this place maybe they would connect this to a uh, london place with the air travel but that would not fulfill the purpose of swadesh darshan scheme because then the traveling would go the tourism would go to london and that would be of no use to us so in my opinion that would not be covered under this scheme under this uh, panch teerth now talking about this swadesh darshan scheme so guys it is a central sector scheme which is completely funded by the central government 2014 to 15 is the launch year the purpose is to create the theme based circuits basically the routes which uh, talks about or which take the people to specific themes to specific places related to a theme for example if there is a ramayan circuit so all the places which are related to ramayan like ayodhya sarayu river or whatever these the area all these areas will be covered okay in the ramayan circuit train so special tourist trains are operated for these circuits now this scheme is uh, going to synergize with the swachh bharat abhiyan skill india and make in india because if we are going to uh, create the special tourist train and if we are going to promote tourism we need to clean the tourist places first otherwise tourism would not be uh, would not flourish there tourist places pe skill uh, the guides who are there and the uh, you can say the small merchants who sell the handicrafts so they also get an opportunity to exploit 
the market not the customers the market then make in india okay so that is also a benefit make in india because many people get uh, get a job and all the work related to the train uh, train uh, refurbishment or the creation that all happens in india so all these missions are integrated with the swadesh darshan mission so they are basically go going to work hand in hand now this does not mean that these schemes have been subsumed under the swadesh darshan scheme that is not happening guys it is just working in the synergy with these schemes okay i hope you are getting the distinction between the two now let's talk about the tourist places which were tourist circuits which were identified in 1415 uh, and remember that prior to this ambedkar circuits these 15 circuits were announced and now with the uh, announcement of the uh, ambedkar circuit now we have the 16 tourist circuits which are going to be developed under the swadesh darshan scheme so here you have the mayan circuit buddhist circuit coastal circuit which will cover the coastal areas of india desert circuit eco friendly circuit the ecology uh, ecological zones will be explored heritage circuit northeast circuit himalayan circuit sufi circuit then we have krishna circuit rural circuit tribal circuit tirthankar circuit wildlife circuit and spiritual circuit so in and all we have considered the diversity of india and put it here in these circuits moving ahead so this is the question i was talking about in the beginning nabard students do listen to me carefully what is the forecast of sugarcane production in the first advance estimate of production of major kharif crops for 2022 to 23 so here guys the right answer is option e 465.05 million tons okay if you see the total food grain production of india estimated in this first advance estimate so the total food grain production is 149.92 million tons and it is four times sugar grains production is four times the total food grain production but we don't need to worry about it because the excess sugar cane will be utilized for the ethanol production so that is the basic purpose Uh, behind promoting the sugar cane production now this would be guys the first generation biofuel because here we are directly putting the crop into the production of the biofuel we are not using the residues of the sugar cane to produce biofuel we are directly putting the sugar cane for the production of the fuel that is why it would be the first generation biofuel now let's discuss the advance estimate so total advance estimate total food grain production would be 149.2 million tons rice production would be 104.99 million tons and remember these productions are for the kharif crops okay so for the kharif crops only these estimates are there do remember it's not about the total production happened in fy23 and this is not stating that okay nutri or course cereal 36.56 million ton maize 23.10 pulses 8.37 tur uh 3.89 all of these estimates are important guys because you are an agri student okay if you won't cover this then what would you cover in the agriculture examination okay this is very important so you have to cover the estimate for each and every crop oil seeds uh 23.57 million tons groundnut 8.37 soya bean 12.89 cotton 34.19 million tons uh which is a uh, calculated as 170 kg uh 170 kg each bale okay so bale is the unit of cotton then jute and mesta 10.9 million uh, bales and sugar cane 465.05 million tons now let's move on to the next question kargil ignited mines is a csr project of which company so here guys that is hpcl which has launched the csr project with indian army so hindustan petroleum corporation limited so this kargil ignited mine the basic purpose of this project is to train the underprivileged girls in jammu and kashmir okay so 50 girl students will be provided coaching for various engineering and medical entrance exams that is the basic idea now apart from this hpcl is also running the other csr projects and the projects are kashmir super 50 medical 
सुपर थर्टी मूवी ऑफ ऋतिक रोशन यू कैन इफ यू हैव सीन दैट देन यू कैन इजिली अटैच दिस इनिशियटिव विद दैट सो द बेसिक पर्पज हियर अगेन इज टू कोच द फिफ्टी स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम जम्मू एंड कश्मीर फॉर मेडिकल एग्जामिनेशन देन वी हैव अनदर इनिशियटिव अंडरटेकन बाई एच पी सी एल दैट एम्स टू क्रिएट मोर देन थाउजेंड टॉयलेट्स इन स्कूल एंड अभी स्वच्छ विद्यालय अभिया ओके सो बट रिमेंबर इट इज नॉट इन जम्मू कश्मीर इट इज पैन इंडिया ओके सो दीज आर दू अदर सी एस आर प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ एच पी सी एल विच आर इन द न्यूज सो यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दैम now we are talking about csr so it's your responsibility to cover the csr limits which make a company eligible to undertake the csr activities and if you are willing you can mention it in the comment section also so that other students who don't know they can read about it okay the next question is which country's military force conducted the abhyas 01 oblique 22 exercise of the coast of chennai So obviously India is a party to this exercise. The other country is US. Okay, so Abhyas is an exercise between India and US, but Abhyas used to take place between the armies. This time, the coast guards of both the countries have conducted this exercise. So your responsibility is to remember the place, Chennai, and the parties, the coast guards, okay, of both the countries. Next question is MIT led. Mars Oxygen in situ resource utilization experiment of NASA has successfully created oxygen on Mars. When was the mission launched? So, guys, this mission was launched in 2020, and it is led by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Okay, so the MIT is undertaking, or you can say, monitoring, or whatever is this, administering the Moxie initiative. Okay, the basic purpose of this Moxie is to create oxygen on the planet of mars so nasa wale definitely mars pe city bana kar hi chhodenge america to mars ja raha hai hum log yahi tikenge pata nahi kya karke manenge nasa wale okay coming on to the next question which bank has launched everyday saving account a unique savings um, account to help the customers spend every day and save every day so here kotak mahindra bank is the right answer now what is the basic idea behind this uh, everyday saving account so here you are given two options first is either you uh, conduct 30 transactions in a month or you put 20000 as the minimum balance and undertake many transaction or n number of transactions within a month so these are the two options that are given to a uh, saver of this account okay so that's the basic idea behind it and no need to remember this mechanism this is just for your awareness that what is the idea behind this everyday saving account max to max if you have your examination any examination i'm talking about be it sci pf rd or whatever it is if for that examination you want to prepare you just need to focus on the bank's name and the saving saving accounts name that is uh, sufficient for your exam okay so this question is very important guys National Payment Corporation of India has provided UPI service on rupee credit for payment acceptance on outlets accepting QR code payments which bank's customers will be the first to be able to use rupee credit card on UPI with bhim app so here guys what is the right answer the right answer is option e punjab national bank indian bank and union bank of india all these three banks have onboarded this initiative now what is this initiative basically so first i'm going to tell you the basic mechanism of this initiative then we will move into the news itself first of all know this fact that there are three initiatives which have been launched and we are going to talk about all the three initiatives but for the very first initiative is this only where the upi service is available on the rupee credit card what is the meaning of this the meaning is that whenever you use upi i hope majority of you must have used the upi service by now okay so you are aware of the basics of upi you just need to enter your banking details then whenever you scan any kind of qr code you have to enter your password after scanning the qr and you uh, make the payment so that's the basic idea behind making a upi payment now what will happen now upi may 
earlier you used to enter your bank details okay so that the payment will be deducted from the bank now what will you do you will enter your credit card details so that the payment will be deducted from the credit card instead of your bank account so whenever you will scan any qr code your payment will be deducted from the balance of your credit card instead of your bank account so what will you have to do you have to just enter your credit card details in the upi system or whatever application you use for upi and then the amount will be deducted so that's the basic mechanism of providing the upi service on the credit card okay now let's move into the details so punjab national bank union bank of india and indian banks customers will get the service uh, first first hand because they have onboarded this service okay here the mechanism has been explained which i have explained in the beginning itself the next initiative i told you that three initiatives have been launched first i have explained now the next initiative is upi light okay upi light was launched earlier as well it's just the uh, announcement you can say or you know that many a times the launch happens earlier as well but it's just that the progress or we can say the you can say the blogging about the initiative is done and that's why it became in the it comes in the news so that has happened with this upi light as well so upi light has been launched and it is basically you can say a near offline mode of payment okay because here you maintain a wallet on your device and in that wallet you have 2000 rupees the maximum limit okay you can spend 200 rupees on a daily basis per transaction okay per transaction the max is 200 rupees above that you cannot make any payment so 200 rupees per transaction and 2000 is the maximum limit of the wallet you can keep at any moment of time in your lifetime okay so that's the basic idea of this upi light so uh, this upi lights benefit is that you don't have to enter your password before making any payment so this makes the entire process hassle free and since it is the small value transaction therefore it would not cause any kind of big loss or hacking uh, risk is also very minimal okay so that's the basic idea behind the upi light the third initiative is that npci has enabled the cross border payments of bills and loan emis through the bharat bill payment system now this i hope it is sounding similar to you guys familiar to you because we have uh, covered this some days back as well when when rbi announced this initiative to make the bharat bill payment system available for the nris also so that they can make their bill payments uh, by sitting at their homes in the foreign country by using this bbps system so what npci has done it has basically you can say implemented the system because how will you make the payment you will have to use upi for that and this system will run on upi the uh, people the nris who are there in the foreign countries they will use upi and pay through this system so that is the basic idea they will pay their uh, loan amounts their bill payments there is one example given here as well so bharat bill pay cross bill system is a feature that has been launched by rbi uh, specifically for the nri so that they can make payments the feature is uh, already live on lulu money okay so this is a application like we have the paytm so lulu money is the application which is sorry which is used by many indians in the middle east to send money back to india that's the basic idea federal bank guys is functioning as the nodal agency for this bbps operating uh, unit or you can say for this bharat bill pay cross border bill system okay bill payment system so that is the news i hope that you have understood the news if there is any kind of confusion you can mention it i will take up that in the next session the last question of the day is recently the india hypertension control initiative has won the 2022 un interagency task force and who special program on primary health care award at the un general assembly when was the initiative launched so here guys the right answer is 2017 the news is that this india hypertension control initiative has got the 
2022 UN Intelligence Task Force and WHO Special Program on Primary Healthcare Award at the UN General Assembly. The 77th edition of this assembly is happening uh, in New York. Okay. Now this India Hypertension Control Initiative was launched in 2017 and it is being run by the Health Ministry, the ICMR and state governments and WHO's Indian branch. These are the four agencies running this initiative. As far as its coverage is concerned, so it has covered more than 30, 130 districts in 23 states. Under this initiative, more than 34 lakh people with hypertension. This is a very huge number. 34 lakh people are struggling with the issue of hypertension. So they are taking treatment in government health facilities, including Ayushman Bharat Healthcare Wellness Center. On that note, tell me how many centers will be developed by the end of this year. Okay. So that is all about this news and it's the end of this session. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Thank you so much for watching the video.